The Christian Incomplete Armor by William Grinnell Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17b Chapter 19 Showeth the great wickedness of those who lift up this sword in defense of any sin. This condemns those as prodigiously wicked who, instead of using this sword to defend themselves against sin and Satan, lift it up ostentatiously for their defense in this wicked and abominable practices. Thus the heretic takes up the word to justify his corrupt tenets, forcing it in favor of his way to bear witness against itself and many profane wretches we meet with who, to ward off a reproof, will dare to seek protection for their ungodly courses from the word, which they have at their tongue's end and interpose to break the blow that is made at them. Tell the sensuous of the voluptuous brutish life, and you shall have him sometimes reply. Solomon was not so precise and scrupulous, who said, A man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. As if Solomon, yea, God himself, that directed his pen, meant to fill the drunkard's quaffling cup for him, and were a friend of gluttons and wine-bibbers, whereas to eat and drink and be merry, as Solomon meant there, amounts to no more than to serve God with gladness in the abundancy of those good things, which God gives to enjoy, as Moses says. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Such is the desperate wickedness of man's heart that the sweetest portions of scriptures are wrestled by many to serve their lusts. The declaration of God's free grace, made on purpose to melt sinners' hearts and draw them from their lust to Christ, how often are they busted to harden them in their sins and keep them from him. Examples of holy men's fall, recorded merely to make them fear who stand, and to preserve a hope of mercy alive in those that have fallen, whereby they are in danger of being swallowed up with despair. How are they perverted by many, who lie like bees swallowing in their own filth, and think all is well, because such eminent saints fell so foully, and yet came off so fairly at last, with their sins pardons and souls saved. The good success that late repentancy hath now and then had in a few, yea, very few scriptures instances, it is strange to think what use and advantage Satan makes of them, to beg time of sinner and make him linger still in the midst of his sins. The eleventh hour, saith he, is not yet come. Why will ye repent so long before you need? Why should he set out in the morning, who may dispatch his journey well enough at an hour before night. The penitent thief, as one saith, stole it to heaven from the cross, hath, I fear, been an occasion, through on God's part an innocent one, to bring many a sinner to the gallows, if not to a place of longer execution in another world. O oh, take heed of this, sinners, as you love your souls. It is not enough to have your lust, but you must also fetch your encouragement from the word and forge God's hand to bear it out, the devil indeed thus abuses scripture Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 thinking therefore to make Christ more readily hearken to his cursed motion and wilt thou tread in his steps by this thou makest one sin too and the last worse to be drunk was a fearful sin in Belshazzar but to quaffle in the bowels, bowls of the sanctuary was far worse no sin is little but the least sin amounts to blasphemy when thou committest it on a scriptural pretense. The devil cannot easily desire a greater occasion of glorying over God than thus to wound his name with his own sword. When Julian the Apostate saw that the Gentile philosophers confuted by the human learnings of some Christians, he said, We are taken by our own wings looking upon it as a great disgrace for them to be beaten and worsened at that which they counted their own weapon. The word is the Holy Spirit's sword. Oh, for shame! Let not Satan make his boast over thy God, Christian, by thy means which he will, if he can persuade thee to wound his name with this his own weapon. He that fetches an argument from the Holy Scriptures to countenance any corruption of opinion or practice what doth he but go about to make God fight against himself? 
He shoots at him with an arrow out of his own quiver. He sins, and then, as it were, says God bid him. If there be a man on the face of the earth that God will single out as a mark for his utmost wrath, wrath, this is he who shelters his wickedness under the wing of the Holy Scriptures, and so make God the pardon of his sin. End of chapter 19